Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting problem on trigonometry. Now, we have sine x to the power cosine x equals 1. And this is kind of like an exponential equation, but at the same time, trigonometric. Maybe trigo exponential, whatever you want to call that. So, we're going to be looking at some interesting cases here to solve this problem. And then I'm going to show you a graph at the end. I'm also going to give you some ideas maybe that could be helpful to look for complex solutions, but I'd like to hear your ideas on what they might look like. So when we see the graph, we're going to notice something interesting, which I'm not telling you right now because I don't want to spoil the surprise. Okay, let's get started. So whenever you have in the real world, when you have something like a to the power b equals 1, we can easily think of three different options. So here's the options. It could be one and B could be a real number. It could be anything, right? Or A could be negative one and B could be an even integer. Or B could be zero, but A has to be different from zero because you don't want to approach zero to the power zero. Well, if you have to approach it, then please make sure you approach it from the right, okay? Awesome. So let's go ahead and apply all these cases on our problem. So suppose we have this equation sine x to the power cosine x equals 1. And obviously you could the ln both sides. I know some of you are thinking as soon as you see a variable expression in the exponent, you start natural logging both sides. And let's see what happens if you do that, right? Well, when you do it, you're going to get something like cosine x times ln sine x equals zero. One of the things you need to be careful about is natural log is only defined for positive expressions. So you're going to make sure that sine x is greater than zero. Other than that, pretty much you're going to get good stuff from here because you have a something, you have something like a product that is called zero solution would be fairly easy. Anyway, so that's one way to approach it, but I'm just going to look at each of these cases and give you hopefully a solution based on that. Okay, so we have this. I want sine x to be 1 and I don't really care about, this is my first case by the way, I don't care about cosine x. If sine x is equal to 1 on the unit circle if you think about it, it's where x is equal to pi over 2 but you could also rotate, rotate and rotate. So you could basically say hey I want x to be pi over 2 plus uh, multiples of 2 pi n is an integer. This is going to give you pi over 2, and then 5 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, so on and so forth. You're just going to add 4 pi every time in the numerator, or just add 2 pi every time. Make sense? So it's going to give you a bunch of solutions, and of course negatives are going to be there, infinitely many. Let's look at the second case. I think the second case was where sine x is negative 1, and cosine x is even, right? Well, here's one thing you should always, always consider. Don't forget that. This is the super duper important formula. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x is 1. If sine is negative uh, 1, then sine squared is going to be 1. So cosine squared is going to be 0. And co come on, 0 is even, right? Some people don't believe that, but it is even. Very evenly even. It's kind of round, but it's even anyways. So it works, right? But guess what? That's the third case as well. So they kind of coincide because if you look at the third case, we said, hey, we want cosine x to be 0 and we don't want sine x to be 0. But guess what? They can't be 0 at the same time. It's impossible, right? Not even in the complex world? I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe it happens. I don't think so. If you do know otherwise, please let me know. Maybe in a different world, you can define a number for which they're both equal to 0. But anyways. So the third case and the second case are identical pretty much. So let's go ahead and just solve it. Sine x equals negative 1. What does that mean? Hmm. It means on the unit circle, x is going to be at 3 pi over 2, but you are free to rotate and make another revolution, so on and so forth. Okay. So that means what? x equals 3, I mean, yeah, 3 pi over 2, that was right, <laughs> plus 2k pi. So this implies, okay, 3 pi over 2, plus 7 pi over 2, plus 11 pi over 2, so on and so forth. Now, put these two results together. It's kind of like an either or, right? I mean, the first case gives us some solutions. The second and third gives us other solutions. They're all good because we're not looking for and or any type of intersection. Make sense? So if you put these two lists together, 
and I'm just considering the positives because let's stay positive here. Negatives are just going to be, you know, uh, similar. Pi over 2 and then 3 pi over 2. So take one from each list and you're going to notice something interesting. Ooh, they're going to be equally spaced, which means we could also write our solution in a more general form and write it as x equals pi over 2 plus m pi. So instead of starting with pi over 2 and adding multiples of 2 pi, and starting with 3 pi over 2 and adding, doing the same thing, we could just fill in all the blanks by starting with pi over 2 and just adding multiples of pi instead of multiples of 2 pi. That's going to fill all the blanks, so we're going to be good in the general sense. Make sense? Okay, cool, cool. So, what are some of the solutions? We already have a list here, so hopefully that makes sense to you. So now, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. But before we look at the graph, I just want to bring up this concept real quick. Can we find any complex solutions? I'm gonna, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this because I don't really have a clear idea. Oh man, too bad. Okay, so I'd like to hear what you think. So, for example, here's one thing that is very helpful for some equations. I think we, we have done a problem a while ago. If I can find the link, I'll include this down here or down below, uh, cosine x equals 2. So this is normally not, not like a real scenario, so we had to use complex numbers. How does it work? So here's how it works, thanks to Euler. Cosine x plus i sine x can be written as e to the power i x. If you replace x with negative x, and substitution is awesome, didn't I tell you before? e to the power negative i x equals this. So from these two equations, you can solve for cosine and sine, and this is what you should be getting. Cosine x can be written as, if you add these equations up and divide by 2, e to the ix plus e to the negative ix divided by 2. And sine x can be written as e to the ix minus e to the negative ix divided by 2i. There's an i at the bottom if you want to multiply by i, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. So those are the values, and you could also write these as hyperbolic stuff, so on and so forth. So how does this help? Okay, so here's what you can do. You can put this at the base and put that on the exponent, but you're going to get a really complex or complicated expression. Okay, I'm going to leave that part open and show you the graph, and we'll just quickly finish up. Now, remember, our solutions were pi over 2 plus multiples of pi, but when you look at the graph, what do you notice? We don't have 3 pi over 2. We only have pi over 2, and then it jumps to 5 pi over 2. Why? Do you know why? Because exponential function doesn't want the base to be negative. Because when the base is negative, everything goes crazy. That's why those are skipped. But guess what? Those are actually solutions. So x can be 3 pi over 2. The base can be negative because negative 1 to the power 0 is, believe it or not, is also 1. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Watch all the videos. And bye-bye.